Jack. Hey. I got another one for you. All right. I'm ready. Maybe. I got more explaining to do. You got some explaining to do. Lucy. Yeah. So here it is. So what I'd like to, the point of these explainer videos, just if it's not otherwise obvious, is I want to just disentangle some things you might have thought you knew or thought you knew well, but not well enough, or there's some nuance to it. Mm -hmm. And I just want to sort of pump people's enlightenment regarding the natural world around them. That's I, all. I, 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 I always like the little plot twist in these. That's okay. Like, all right. That's, that's what's cool about it. It's like, okay. You know? Okay. So today I want to talk about force and pressure. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm not talking about sort of emotional pressure. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Right, right. You know, my, my job has got me under so much pressure. I'm talking about physics pressure and right. physics force, all right? Um, by the way, another way we use those words in everyday life, we say, um, how much force are you showing on the battlefield? So that's another right. cultural usage of those two terms. Mm -hmm. Each of those words has a precise definition in physics. Not to mention space force. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's in there too. Okay. <laughs> they don't call it space pressure. No, it's a right. space force. So uh, a force is what you think it is, right? You push on something and you create a force that might set it into motion. Okay. And if it's something that doesn't move, but it's still fragile, you put enough force on it, you might break it. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So forces make things happen. Mm -hmm. And when we say happen, we mean something changes about the object. Typically, it's set into motion. And Isaac Newton first wrote down an equation about this. Okay, he said force equal, equals the mass of the object times the acceleration it'll get if you put that force on that object. Gotcha. Okay, so you use that formula. You say, well, here's an object, I'm gonna put a certain amount of force and it has to be like a net force. So in other words, if you put a force exactly opposite mine, then the forces cancel and then there's no net forces, nothing accelerates. Right. So if everything is in balance, you can have very high forces operating, but nothing's gonna happen. Right. But if there's a slight imbalance, mm -hmm. then there will be motion. And didn't long ago we talk about this like at the gym? Why is it that the person spotting for someone else does not have to be as muscle bound as the person lifting the weights. Have you ever thought about that? Um, every time I go to the gym. Okay. No, I'm because just saying. Because somebody you... will say, hey man, give me a spot. And it's always a dude who's eight times bigger than I am. <laughs> and he's lifting on a building. <laughs> he's actually lifting a building. <laughs> right. And, and he's just like. And just stand there in case I drop it, right? right. And he goes, hey buddy, can you give me a spot? And I'm just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do when you're lifting, like, you and know? And you're struggling. You're not only right. If you're struggling and there's a point where you can't lift it anymore, you want me to come help you? Right. You right. want me to then take over. Okay. Right. Here's why that works. Okay? Because if all forces are balanced, then any force will move it, no matter how small. Ooh. So watch what happens. So I'm there, I'm on the bench, the bench, just a bench press typically, right? Because mm -hmm. the weight is above the person's neck. Correct. And so this is dangerous. You don't need right. a spotter if you do a bent over sort of rowing lift. No, because you could just drop the weight. You just, and you no just big drop deal. it. It's no big yeah. deal. It's, but when it's we, over it's... your windpipe, it's like, hey, Chuck, can you spot me? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. hey, man, you want to die? It's okay. <laughs> you get my skinny ass to prevent right. you from right. dying. Okay. Right. Right. So watch. So here I am, I'm lifting, and that's getting harder and harder, all right? And now there's a point where I get it halfway, and I can't get it any further, and I say, Chuck, help me out here. In that moment, my upward force equals the downward force of those weights. And right. force on Earth from gravity is called your weight. So the weight equals the force number pushing up on it. If they're equal, now the thing has just stopped moving. Ah. Okay? It has stopped moving. So now you come along and say, here you go. And then you lift. And you lift. You can probably use one hand to do this. You lift it back up onto the rack. Gotcha. Because the forces were balanced. Whereas previously, the, 
the person's force was greater than the then weight then. of the weights, right? And so if it's greater, I'm in control here, and I can push the thing away from Earth, uh, away from Earth's urges to try to bring it back. When we're in balance, then you break that tie, basically, and put it over the hump. Nice. That's why that works. That's very cool. Okay. So we're team we're teaming up on the weights, basically. Like you're teaming and up, right? And, and you it don't doesn't have make to a be... difference how strong I am. I could take two fingers and just whatever little bit I'm doing. Now you're provided, winning. provided that he's not losing that battle. Okay. Right. If the weight is on its way down, mm. you're going to need. It's not balanced. You have to counteract that. Right. And then put in a little more to get the thing back up to the to, right. uh, to the stack. And that's when I stand over top of him and go. Sorry, man, you're going to die. So. <laughs> it's like, you sound like this has happened before. <laughs> no. All right. So just to get a sense of what forces are. Okay. That's all. And, oh, so with regard to acceleration, if there's a net force, then the object's motion will continue to increase in speed. Mm -hmm. You have an acceleration. All right. So there you have it. One last thing, just in detail. If all forces are balanced... It can still be in motion. It just won't be accelerating. Right. Okay. So you can have no motion or constant motion. If there's a net force, it will accelerate. That's the point that's going on here. All right. So you're in your car and your foot is on the accelerator pedal and you're sticking to 60 miles an hour, 55 miles an hour. Well, what does it mean if your foot is on the accelerator pedal, but you're not increasing in speed? You're not accelerating. Oh, well, the force the accelerator pedal is trying to put in the car is exactly balanced by the friction of the tires on the road and the air resistance. All of that is balanced. And you're maintaining constant speed. Sweet. If you want to take it out of balance, you press the pedal even harder to nice. overcome that balance. And now you can pass the car on the right. Nice. By accelerating up to 70, you pass right. him, and then you slow back down again. Right. So that's what's going on with force. And you, everybody learns this in like physics 101, the first 10 days. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, what is pressure? Mm. Pressure is when you have been dating for four years and she goes, what are we doing here? <laughs> okay. Just this Chuck. <laughs> Seriously, how many times can I take you home for Thanksgiving and explain to my parents that, you know, we're not ready yet? What's, I mean, what okay, is Okay, so happening? that's pressure. You that's tell pressure. me that's pressure. <laughs> okay, that's not the kind of pressure I'm talking about here. Oh, okay. 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 That's dating pressure. How about okay. that? Right. right. So we're talking about physics pressure. So pressure intimately needs force to be what it is. But it's not the same thing. Uh-oh. Okay? Okay. It's not the same thing. So, if you want to find out what it is, you got to look at the equation for pressure. Okay? Oh, okay. Have you ever seen the equation for pressure? I don't think I have. All right. Let me, before I get to that, let me tell you a few things that are affected by pressure. For example, okay. uh, your knife set. How sharp are your knives? That is all about pressure. All about pressure. Okay. okay? Uh, if you, are you going to fall through the ice on that pond as you walk across it? Mm -hmm. That's all about pressure. And stupidity. <laughs> and stupidity. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. So let's talk about this. Here you go. Pressure is force divided by area oh Ooh. okay and i didn't even know that equation but that makes perfect sense it makes perfect sense so watch so watch so if i'm walking out onto a frozen pond and i don't want to fall through if i have tiny itty bitty ass feet then the area of the bottom of my feet is small but what happens if you have a small number in the denominator of a fraction? The, the value, value of that of goes that. higher. Right. So if pressure is forced divided by area, and that area gets smaller and smaller, 
the pressure gets higher and you punch through that ice and you die. You need clown shoes. You need clown shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Get the biggest ass shoes you can find. So that force is spread over the largest area possible. Right. So when you have a big area, the force divided by a big area makes a low pressure. And so with low pressure, now you can get across the ice without sinking through. It improves your chances of, 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 of not breaking the ice. Yeah. This is what snowshoes are. What what yes. are snowshoes? They're like the, the 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 you know the mountain man snow equivalent of clown shoes, all what? right? Yeah. Because the the snowshoe is this big. It's a uh, it's like a big net, <laughs> and it attaches to the bottom of your feet. And when you right. walk on it, your body weight is now spread over a larger area, and you don't plunge down through deep snow. Mm. You still sink a little bit, but not as much as you would have, and then you can actually walk. Mm. Have you ever seen the width of the paws of a polar bear? They're huge. Oh, my God. It's like, oh, yeah. my God, because there's some big mofos, and they don't want to sink through the snow. Okay? They spend a lot of their time on ice, but this matters. Okay? And so... What about your knives? When you go to cut something, you apply a force. How do you make that force as effective as possible to cut? You want the lowest possible area over which you're applying that force so that you have the highest possible pressure. Okay? You get pressure for free. So when you so what 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 is a dull knife? You look at it under a microscope. It's it's a it's all chewed up. It's flat. It's thick. So your pressure, let's say you put ten pounds of pressure on it, is spread over this long area over the length of the blade. And you try to cut something with it with it, and you mangle the food. It, you have to press even harder to get it through. A perfectly sharpened blade. What's the area of a blade edge? Tell me that. The area of a, of a sharpened blade edge, it is so tiny that even the mildest force of that knife will cut through the food. And that's nice. why chefs are always sharpening their knives because they want to increase the pressure on their food because they don't want to have to increase their force to get the pressure they want. They're reducing the area to get the pressure they want. Sweet. So this is, this is force versus pressure. And uh, I don't know how many people internalize this, feel it, think about it, mm -hmm. but this distinction between force and pressure manifests everywhere, everywhere. And by the way, it's why a tornado can explode your house. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> you say, oh, because the wind is high. Here's what's happening, all right? Uh, it's very low pressure in the middle of a tornado. Okay, really, really low pressure. And inside your house, you have slightly higher pressure than that tornado. Now suppose that pressure difference is like one pound per square inch difference, let's say. Okay, so it might be a little high for this example. Like a tenth of a pound per square inch. I don't care, a tenth of a pound, okay? So inside the house, the air has not equilibrated with the outside of the house yet. The tornado comes, it sits on your house. Oh my gosh, every square inch of your wall is feeling a tenth of a pound pressing outward. So 10 square inches feels how much? A hundred. No, ten, it's a tenth of a pound. Oh, so 10 one, square inches is pound. a pound, okay? A hundred square inches is just, 10 inches by 10 inches, that's 10 pounds. Right. Your wall is probably bigger than 10 inches by 10 inches square. Yeah. You keep adding this up. And that pressure builds on top of- You get a thousand pounds of pressure. Oh my God, that's more than the Kool-Aid guy actually exerts <laughs> it's to it's get through a wall to <laughs> say, oh yeah. So what I didn't, I didn't say it right. So the, the it's a thousands of pounds of total force right spread across that 
wall, but the whole wall is only built to handle you leaning on it or, 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 it's, or to hold up the house. It's not enough to prevent the tornado from exploding your house. And all the walls blow out. Take a look at video footage of homes. They don't collapse. Boom. No, they're, they're turned into matchsticks. It's matchsticks, yeah. and they explode outwards. Right. That is pressure at its most deadly. Wow. And so, you know, there you have it. Now, see, this is what I'm talking about when I say plot twist. No one would ever think that you just talk about force and pressure and we end up right here. That's right. And by the way, it's how bombs work. What is a bomb? It sets a pressure wave, high temperature uh, expansion of the air because there's some uh, the, an explosion is a very high um, temperature abrupt in, uh, device. Right. But it happens it has to happen rapidly so that it's like like a bullet firing. It's a rapid expansion of gas, which shoves the bullet out. But if it's a bomb, there's no bullet. It's just the expanding air. Right. Sometimes you can put in shrapnel, but air will do this. Oh, and the man. expanding air comes out, and now you have air pressure too high on one side of the wall versus the other, and that'll blow the wall inward rather than outward. Or if the bomb is inside the house, it'll blow the house up out. instead of it. Right. So this is pressure on the wall spread over the area. And by the way, if all of that force were in one spot, it would just puncture a hole through the wall. Right. That's so cool. Oh, my God. So why can't we find a way? Everybody's always trying to figure out a way to predict where a tornado will go, which is almost impossible. Why not just have, like, a tornado airbag? Well, you would die. Never mind. <laughs> no, I was going to say. Wait, Chuck, so Chuck. Wait, Chuck. You don't need tools to tell you where the freaking tornado is. Just look. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You try to see airbags <laughs> exploding. Oh, th there must be a tornado somewhere here. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> I'm overthinking. You're Dang overthinking you. that one I'm totally, overthinking. Chuck. Overthinking. Yeah. Okay, Chuck, we're done there. That's pressure versus uh, force. That's very cool. Not to mention, very, very cool song. Under Pressure. Oh, yeah, yeah. The qu uh, queen. Yeah, That's very right. good. Very good. Yeah. All, right. All right. We got to go. Okay. Good to have you, Chuck. Tweeting Always at Chuck pleasure. Nice Comic. I follow you. Thank you. Thank All you, sir. right. I follow you, too. We're done here. I've been your host, Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. And as always, keep looking up.